TV Park on TVN. Major funding for the Magic School Bus is provided by the National Science Foundation, supporting education and research in science, mathematics, and technology. And Microsoft Home supports the Magic School Bus and other programs that further learning, exploration, and discovery. Additional funding is provided by U.S. Department of Energy and Carnegie Corporation of New York. And by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the annual financial support of viewers like you. Seatbelts, everyone! Please let this be a normal field trip with a friend. No way! Oh. Cruising on that main street, you're relaxed and feeling good. Yeah. Next thing that you know, you see it. Octopus in the neighborhood, surfing on the sound wave. Swinging through the stars, yeah. take a left at your intestine, pick your second right past Mars on the Magic School Bus. Navigate a nostril, climb on the Magic School Bus, make a plane turn to on our Magic School Bus. Rock the river of love on the Magic School Bus. Such a fine thing to do. So strap your bones right to the seat. Come on in and don't be shy. Come on. Just to make your day complete, you might get back. It's a wild ride. Come on, ride on the magic school bus. I told them I'd have an idea for broadcast day. <coughs> so I'll have an idea for broadcast day. Why don't I have an idea for broadcast day? Ralphie! Get up, Ralphie! You're going to be late for school! Oh, no! <coughs> Ralphie, what are you doing? Our class is broadcasting two hours of live television today, and I said I'd have a show for them to do. And I don't. Yet. <coughs> but I will! <coughs> no, you won't. What? It's my opinion, as your mother, and as a doctor, that you have a fever, which means you are sick, which means you are going back to bed. But, but, Mom! No buts about it, Ralphie. I'm sure your class can do broadcast day without you. We can't do it without him! And we go on in an hour! Where, Where is, is he? Wondering where you got to. Hello? <gasps> yes, Dr. Tonelli. Dr. Tonelli, that's Ralphie's mom. Uh huh, yes, I see. Uh huh, uh huh. Yes, he's sick. Oh, poor Ralphie. Why aren't I surprised? Of course, he must stay in bed. What? In bed? What about broadcast day? Yes, Dr. Tonelli. Thank you for calling. Bye-bye. Is Ralphie staying home from school today, Miss Frizzle? Yes, I'm afraid so, Arnold. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Why, we're taking school to him, of course. To the bus! Are we doing broadcast day from Ralphie's room, Miss Frizzle? What better place to take chances, make mistakes? And it sure is messy! Miss Frizzle, are you sure this visit isn't a field trip? <laughs> what do you think, Arnold? I think Ralphie shouldn't have stayed home today. How can anything that smells like grape shoe polish help my body get well? Ugh. It will if you take one teaspoon three times a day. And don't forget to shake well before using. Like this? <laughs> Even your jokes are sick. Open. No! Oh boy, I feel great! Mom, you are a miracle doctor. Can I go to school now? Forget it, Ralphie. 
I've got to go see another patient, but Grandpa's downstairs if you need anything. I'll check in later. If I get an idea, I'll still have time to phone it in. That's it! A phone-in! Huh? <laughs> Hi, we're here! Hello! Rafi, we're here! I must be hallucinating. Maybe I'm sicker than I thought. Hi, Rafi! How you doing? Uh-oh! Gee, you look terrible. Don't worry, I'll have you camera ready in no time. <coughs> is it just me? Or is my entire class standing in my room? Aren't you glad to see us? <laughs> we came to do broadcast day. Really? What a great idea. Now and then I do have them, Ralphie. Speaking of great ideas, what's yours, Ralphie? Mine? Oh, you mean for broadcast day? <coughs> Oh, you'd better take it easy, Ralphie. Your body is telling you to slow down. But, Miss Frizzle, I can't. We have a show to do. What does my body know anyway? Oh, it knows a lot about the detection and rejection of infection, Ralphie. Whoa! Inside you, at this moment, there is action, excitement, adventure. Exactly what we need for our show. So, what's your idea, Ralphie? Uh, well, uh, <coughs> oh, what's going on with my body anyway? Oh, that's an excellent question, Ralphie. Class, everyone back to the bus. Huh? But, Miss Frizzle, we just got here. Mm-hmm. Single file, please. Wait! Where are you going? You can't go on a field trip now. And I can't do broadcast day all by myself. <coughs> I'm sick. Huh? Wait a minute. What's going on? Oh, it was your idea, Ralphie. We're here to get the inside story. Inside story? Inside what? What about broadcast day? Think, Ralphie. Where is all the action right now? The action? Liz, what are you doing? Hang on a second. The action is all inside me. What a great idea. Broadcast day could be about what's going on inside me. Excellent, Ralphie. Roll tape. This is FNN. I'm Ralphie, and this is the Frizzle News Network. Welcome to our live, on-the-scene coverage of a natural disaster of major proportions. My poor sick body. Over to you, Keisha. Thanks, Ralphie. One disturbing question remains unanswered at this hour. What's making Ralphie sick? The FNN News Team hopes to find out. And to do that, they will go straight to the troubled zone. My sore throat. Seatbelts, everyone! Ralphie, say ah! Uh... Ah! <laughs> cool! I've never seen that from the outside before! The FNN news team is nearing the disaster area. In a moment, we will have live footage. <laughs> See anything yet? Whoa! A shot of those vocal cords, class. Look how red and swollen his throat is. No wonder it hurts. The question is, why is it red and swollen? And why does it... <coughs> yeah! <coughs> hey, where'd they go? Where's the bus? Huh? Ralphie, did you have to cough? Sorry, <laughs> I couldn't help it. At this rate, we'll never get the inside story of what's making Ralphie sick. We've got to find another way in. Mm-hmm. 
It's not as easy for us or germs to get inside the body as you might think. Yeah, skin pretty much covers it. How are you going to get the inside story if you can't get inside? Wait a second. I've got it! Look at this! Is it just me? Or does this say, this way in? It's a shortcut. Get it? Shortcut? Carlos, yuck! Excellent observation, Carlos. Seatbelts, everyone! <laughs> wow! You saw it first on FNN News. Hey, you guys! The whole world wants to know. Now that you've found a way in, how are you going to get to my throat? Ralphie's right. We're all the way down at the knee. Hmm, let's see if I can put you in the picture. As I always say, for every trip, there's a road map. That's Ralphie's bloodstream. Could we travel through his bloodstream to get to his throat? Absolutely, Dorothy Ann. We'll take the Trans-Ralphie Highway system. And here we go! Wahoo! This is Ralphie for FNN News. My entire class has just dived deep into my cut, and it doesn't even hurt! What are those? Those are tiny, tiny blood vessels. They're all part of the bloodstream. Eeny, meeny, miny, moo! Head north, Miss Frizzle! Yee-haw! Is that my blood? But I thought blood was red! That stuff is clear! That's right, Ralphie. The liquid part of the blood is clear. So what are those red things? Are they what made blood look red? Scintillating surmise, Ralphie. According to my research, they're called red blood cells. And the white ones are white blood cells. But what are those jaggedy things? Those are platelets. They help the body heal scrapes and cuts. But we still don't know what's making me feel sick. And boy, do I feel sick. Ralphie! Papa! <gasps> there! <laughs> Quick, hide, Liz! Hello, sweetheart. Feeling any better? Yeah! Fine! Great! It, um... Looks as if you've been busy. Just, uh... Uh, a game I was playing. So, Mom, I think I'll get some sleep now. Hey, what's that you're watching? What? This? It's, um, <laughs> nothing. Just some movie. You wouldn't like it. Oh, I don't know about that. It's remarkably realistic. Look, red blood cells. And those look exactly like white blood cells. Nah, are you kidding? Those are just cheap special effects. Look, you can even see the wires. We're here. We are? We're in Ralphie's throat. There are a lot more white blood cells here. Where are they going? Looks like they're after something. Follow the white blood cells. Sorry, Ralphie, what did you say? Me? Did I say something? Look, that truck thing is following the white blood cells through the blood vessel wall to the place where the infection is. Yes! They're getting the inside story! <laughs> Whoop. Ah, now that we're inside Ralphie's throat tissue, time for some on-the-spot reporting. Up close and personal. Keisha Carlos, camera one. The trick here is not to make eye contact. Phoebe and, uh, Arnold, you take camera two. I'm the one who should have stayed home today. Way to go, guys. Take chances. Get messy. Get out there. Get the story. Just don't mention my name, okay? Ralphie, are you talking to yourself? M not exactly, Mom. And now, over to Keisha and Carlos, live from the throat. 
Ralphie, that little girl looks just like your friend Wanda. Who, her? No, no, no. Wanda's much, uh, shorter. Carlos here. We're out here in the throat tissues trying to find out what's going on and... Hey! What's that? Look at that, folks! Whoa! Have we got us some action here? Those yellow-green balls are destroying that wall. What are those green things? Those are bacterial cells. They're actually not unlike the bacteria that are making you sick. That's bacteria and it's making me sick? This just in, folks. That's bacteria and it's making Ralphie sick. And according to my research, bacteria are germs. Once inside our bodies, they can make us sick. Ralphie has a bacterial infection. This is it. <coughs> the inside story. Bacteria invade throat. Is it just me, or did they say Ralphie? No, no, it says here this show's about a guy named Alfie. It's nay on my aim nay. The bacteria from Ralphie's throat infection are everywhere, and they're destroying his throat cells. Look, look, here come some white blood cells. Whoa, wow. It's throwing stuff at the bacteria. Incredible! That white blood cell just ate those bacteria! That huge battle is going on inside me? <coughs> I mean inside a a Alfie. <coughs> this battle is raging! Who's going to win? No wonder I'm sick. Arnold here, on location with the infection. I'm going to try to get an exclusive interview with these two bacteria. <laughs> I mean, four bacteria. I mean, eight bacteria? Hey, guys, they're multiplying. Help! Bad news, guys. The bacteria from the infection are multiplying faster than the white blood cells can gobble them up. We're posing. Let's get out of here. How could my body lose? Ralphie. Are you all right? I don't think you should be watching this. No! I mean, <laughs> please don't turn it off, Mom. I want to see how it ends. I'll tape it for us downstairs. But you don't understand. What I understand is that your body needs to save its strength so it can use its energy to battle those bacteria. You have to rest, sweetheart. It's not just me, Ralphie. Any good doctor knows the best cure is complete rest. Dorothy Ann. Right now, the white blood cells are losing. Certainly looks that way, Dorothy Ann. They need help. They need backup support. Ralphie, did you hear me? Where's our backup support? Uh, backup support? Where do I get that? Not to worry, Ralphie. It's already on its way. Cue the medicine. Is that the medicine Mom gave me earlier? It sure is, Ralphie. Look what it's doing! It's destroying more bacteria. The medicine is giving the white blood cells another chance. And they're throwing out even more of those stick things. Oh, those stick things are antibodies. The white blood cells use them to mark the bacteria. I hope this doesn't mean what I think it means. Oh, no. Ralphie's antibodies are marked the bus as bacteria. But we're not bacteria. We're Ralphie's friends. But his white blood cells are doing such a good job. They now recognize us as enemies, too. Enemies? But we know what white blood cells do to enemies. That's right, Arnold. They'll try to destroy us. Destroy us? Oh, the wonder of the human body. Ralphie! Do something! Ralphie! You've got to help us! Ah! Help me! Help! Ralphie! Oh, don't worry, class. 
In order to destroy us, Ralphie's white blood cells will have to catch us first. When the spot is tight, hang a rot! Broadcast day! The story! Where is everybody? Ms. Frizzle here with an update on the Ralphie story. To escape the white blood cells, we left Ralphie's throat and are now heading up his nasopharyngeal passages. The what? According to my research, that means his nose? We're up Ralphie's nose? <laughs> That's the inside of my nose? Weird. Bless you. Of course, there's no telling how long we'll have to stay here. Or how long we can stay here. Liz, I'm trying to think here. I get it. I've got to sneeze them out. But I don't feel like sneezing. Ha 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 ha! Second floor, boy socks. <laughs> Going up. This is Keisha, still reporting to you live for FNN. We are now back in Ralphie's room. So, Ralphie, what do you have to say about today's amazing adventure? Well, I'm sorry that my body made such a mess of it. Wait a minute. Do you really think your body's been working against you? Sure, and against you, too. You almost didn't get in. Remember? Only because your body's built to keep out things like a bunch of germs. Or a bus full of kids. And my throat is so sore I can barely talk. Only because your body is sending extra blood there to help fight the infection. Okay, but what about when you almost got gobbled up by my white blood cells? Only because your body thought we were bacteria. Your body was only trying to protect you. I guess you're right. My body was just trying to get rid of germs. Like you. <laughs> Come along, class. Good old body. So that's the inside story, isn't it, Miss Frizzle? That's the inside story, Ralphie. Pretty amazing, don't you think? Well, we may have won the battle, class. But he's still fighting the war. Hey guys, how's this for a concept? Inside Ralphie, the series. Week one, he gets a Charlie horse. Week two, tennis elbow. Week three, the final episode. Athletes fought. <laughs> Magic school bus? Is this the magic school bus? 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 I want the magic school bus! I want the magic school bus! Sorry, Liz, but I can't hear a thing. <gasps> Liz, your heart sounds like a telephone. <laughs> Hello? Hello, is this the Magic School Bus? Yes, and you're talking to the producer. Can I help you? Yeah, what were those kids doing visiting Ralphie when he is so sick and tired? Oh, well, don't worry. He wasn't infectious. But thanks for calling. Bye. Hello, Magic School Bus. You know... Ralphie shouldn't go around picking scabs. If the magic school bus got in, so could germs. A good point. Bandages, like skin, are there to keep germs out of your body. And bacteria aren't the only things that can make you sick. There are viruses, parasites, fungi, and... Right, and some sickness isn't caused by infection, but by the body's own systems not working right. Thanks for calling. Bye. Hello, Magic School Bus. 
Well, I think that somebody should say that medicine can be dangerous, and kids should never take medicines without an adult in charge. You just did, thank you. Um, did Ralphie ever get better? He sure did. His body did a great job of getting rid of all those germs, and he got just as healthy as he was before. And they should also say that your body's always trying to be healthy. You're absolutely right. And there's a lot you can do to help it out. I know. Like eating properly, getting enough sleep, and exercising. Getting all your shots is another way to keep healthy. Shots help your body be prepared for some of the really tough germs. I don't like getting shots. They sometimes hurt. Me neither. But I also don't like getting sick. And I'd rather get a shot now than get sick later. Me too, I guess. Hey, does Miss Frizzle ever get sick? No way! She takes good care of herself, gets all of her shots, and she's magic. Surfing on a sine wave, swinging through the stars. Take a left at your intestine, take your second right past Mars. I'm a magic school bus. Alligator nostril. I'm a magic school bus. Right to the sea. Come on in and don't be shy. Come on. Just to make your day complete. You might get baked into a pie on a magic school bus. Step inside, it's a wild ride. Come on, ride on the magic school bus. Major funding for the magic school bus is provided by the National Science Foundation, supporting education and research in science, mathematics, and technology. And Microsoft Home supports the Magic School Bus and other programs that further learning, exploration, and discovery. Additional funding is provided by U.S. Department of Energy and Carnegie Corporation of New York. And by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the annual financial support of viewers like you. Visit your local library and read more about science in the Magic School Bus and other science books. This is TGS. What's the story you wish for? What's the story you wish for? What's the story you wish for? Follow us on the greatest adventures ever weekdays at 5 and weekend mornings at 9.30 on Kazoo. Hey, want to win your own Kazoo t-shirt? Let Kazoo hear from you. Send your name, address, phone number, the name of your favorite program, and your shirt size to Kazoo on APT 2112 11th Avenue South, Suite 400, Birmingham, Alabama, 35205. We'll draw one name each week and the winner will receive his or her own Kazoo t-shirt. Right today, Kazoo is standing by. I am one. Ha <laughs> ha! But I'm not gonna lay a big number on you. It's just that we hear that the letters are talking about Sesame Street. But hey, Sesame Street has always counted on us numbers first. Because who can count on letters, huh? Sesame Street. Shut up! Wasting time. Can we work together? We can all share. It's time to check it out. And here's your happening host, Pete. Hello, hello, hello. I'm happy to have you here for another edition of Check It Out, where every day is a red letter day, and today's red letter is Z. Zoo, a place where you can see lots of different animals from all around the world, living in a home away from home. What animal do you want to see at the zoo? Well, that's it for now, and remember, if there's anything you need to know, all you have to do is... Check, Check it out! out! Yeah! Hi, Priscilla. Hi, Pinky. Hi, Pernell. 
Hi, Pinky. Hi, Polly. Hi, Pinky. Hi, Buckle. Hello, Pinky. Funding for Wishbone provided by annual financial support from PBS viewers like you. And by Chuck E. Cheese's. It's cool to learn. Share the fun and grow. Cool to play it smart. Let's share the fun, everyone. We're glad to play our part. Chuck E. Cheese's proudly supports PBS Kids Television, where a kid can be a kid. 7-Eleven. Anyone can explore the pages of a book. mission, Joe. Work with me here, okay? <gasps> Look, Joe! A bag of food! We're rich! I hereby claim this bag in the name of... Me. Hmm. Move over, doggy. What? Hey, that's my bag! Get away from there, wishbone. Hey, Ellie. Hello, Joe. This your dog? Uh, yeah. He's pretty cute. Pretty cute? I think she means dashingly <laughs> handsome. Uh -huh. <gasps> what are you doing with all that food? Oh, I, uh, I'm... Can you keep a secret? Sure. I'm stealing it. <gasps> a thief! What? I'm not stealing it for myself. I'm taking it to the food bank at the homeless shelter. But I've got to be sneaky about it because it's against the rules. What rules? Mr. Bison, Mr. Supervisor of Food Services, says we have to throw the food out after it's been here over a week. Even if it's perfectly good to eat, go straight to the dumpster. He wants to throw away food? Oh, we need to have a serious chat. You mean it just goes to waste? Bingo. So I started thinking to myself, Ellie, I thought, why not hide the food till after everybody's gone and give it to people who really need it? Let me help you. Oh, no, Joe, I, I don't want to get you into trouble. I'm breaking the rules, you know. Breaking the rules for a good cause. Just like the legendary Robin Hood, champion of the underdog. The legends of Robin Hood started in England during the Middle Ages. In all the songs and stories of Robin Hood, his target is injustice. Legend has it that Robin Hood was once a wealthy nobleman, but he turned outlaw in order to help the poor and oppressed people of England. Robin Hood lived in Sherwood Forest with a band of free men who were all dedicated to helping the poor survive the cruelty of the rich. You see, England was in bad shape. Good King Richard had been captured overseas and held for ransom. While he was away, the fat cats had taken over. Halt! Stand and deliver! Here now, peasant. How do you dare to stop me? I am Lord Pigleby. And I am a simple forester who demands that you pay a fair toll for passing on my highway. We have no time for such foolishness. Kill him. Then let's do press on. It's nearly nightfall. Perhaps I didn't make myself clear. I am Robin Hood. Now let's try this again. Why don't you tell me how much money you're carrying, and we'll agree to a fair toll. Be honest with me, and I'll be fair with you. We are but a few poor pilgrims making our way towards York. All we have, we carry in this little purse. Really? Well, if you are a poor pilgrim, I'll double your money. 
But if you're lying, you lose everything. Oh, little John! <laughs> Search the carriage. Right away, Your Hoodness. I'm afraid I can't allow that. Did you hear that, my merry men? He says he can't allow it. What say you? Oh, go ahead. Search the carriage. You'll find nothing. Really, nothing. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Robin, look here. <laughs> nothing, eh, my lord? I found this under the seat. And... I warned you not to lie to me. I've never seen that before. It must have accidentally been left there by the people who had the carriage before us. I just rented it this morning, truly. Don't hurt me. Well then, we'll just take it and make sure it gets back to its rightful owner. Thank you. And now I think you'd best be off. Go! Oh! You can't escape the law forever, Robin Hood. I'll tell the Sheriff of Nottingham, then he'll get you. When did they start decorating carriages with fat men? Must be a new fashion. <laughs> All right. Well done. Little John, you must send one third of this money to help pay the King's ransom. Yes, Your Robinus. The sooner he can pay his ransom, the sooner he can return to England to set things right. All of you. Take a little to give to the poor of your villages. I'll take the rest to give to the poor in Nottingham. We will all meet at the camp this evening. My merry men, I thank you all. Okay, Vu, listen closely. We've got to get you to the shelter. You and I are going to make a break for it around the back, then I'll divert... Hey, wait, come back, not yet! Here's the last of it for today. I do appreciate your help. It really saves my back. <laughs> this will feed a lot of people. It most certainly will not. And the no good award for selfishness goes to... Mr. Bison. Ellie, I've had my eye on you. I believe you know my position on the issue of these food donations. You got my memo. But we just wanted to take the food to the food bank down at the shelter. What's wrong with that? You have no idea how much paperwork there is involved for me. You need special supervision to transmit non-canned food stuff from one institution to another. It's all very complicated. You have to set up a special program. Let's set up the program. I'm afraid we don't have the time. But maybe we could... No maybe... time. That's my decision. Principal Leonard always talks about how important volunteers and donations are. She'd let us take the food. Principal Leonard has been delayed at her educational conference. In her continued absence, my decision is final. But you can help in one way. How? You can help Ellie. Take this food and put it into that dumpster over there. Why, that pencil-pushing, food-wasting such-and-such. Do I have to supervise this as well? Oh, you want something to supervise. Try this! <laughs> Dog in the cafeteria, that's unsanitary. Come back here! Wait. We can't give up now. You don't have to do this. I know. Lost him back by the frozen foods. Come on! Mmm, food bank. Is that about it, Joe? Yeah, I think so. Good. Joe? Miss Gilmore, what are you doing here? Well, I volunteer. I didn't know you were having a food drive. Oh, boy. Don't just stand there. Somebody make an excuse. Well, it's a uh, kind of a uh, surprise. Hey, not bad. Well, everything is still packaged, and it's probably okay. I just need to keep our records straight. Records, 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 records. This is my first day up front here. I uh, usually work with the canned food. We had better be going now. Oh, wait, please. I just need to get you to sign a release. Well, we want to remain anonymous donors. That's what I usually do. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. I wish I knew more about this. <gasps> okay. Um... Just tell me where he got the food. Oh, get ready for quick excuse number two. Who wants to take this one? You know she doesn't trust me, so... Can that be anonymous, too? Oh, uh, well... A person can be, but I think we have to know where the food came from or we can't accept it. It's from our cafeteria at school. How nice! You have a new program, huh? Okay. 
Who wants to sign the release? I will. So much for being anonymous. Sometimes when you're doing a good deed, you need to be undercover. Robin Hood had to be a master of disguise because the evil sheriff of Nottingham was always on the lookout for him. What are you waiting for? Give it to me now. Robin would sneak into Nottingham to make sure that the money he took from the rich went to the poor. Pots! Who will buy my pots? Nice, unsuspicious pots for sale. How about you, dear lady? Here you are, Mum. Why don't you try this bowl? Yes, it is I, Robin Hood. Now go tell those who need it most to sample my pots. <laughs> there you are, my good man. Here's one I made especially for you. Pots! Plain, ordinary pots! A very good day for you, isn't it, peddler? Not bad, my lord, not bad. I don't believe I've seen you here before. Oh, I arrived only today. Mm. Well, since you prosper, I'm sure you won't mind paying my special tax. Oh, Sir Billy, I've had such a hard day already. I came through Sherwood Forest, I did, and I stumbled upon the camp of that rascal Robin Hood. And he stole half my pots. Robin Hood, you've been to his camp? Yes, indeed, sir. I'll never forget it. Uh, tell me, could you find your way back there, peddler? If I capture Robin Hood, I'll reward you. I'll take you and your men there at once. No, no, no. no. Uh, I'll go alone to scout the location that my men can return and stamp out the villain. Come, show me. <laughs> As you wish, my lord. This is the villain's camp. <laughs> when I capture Robin Hood, I will be sheriff for life. Nothing will stop me. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't afford to share the glory. No witnesses. Here now, that's no way to treat someone who's just helped you. Oh. Is it, Little John? Indeed it isn't, Robin. <laughs> it's downright rude. <laughs> and you're... Robin Hood, at your service, sir. Don't kill me. Don't kill me, please, please, spare my life, please. <laughs> oh, I can't stand to see a grown sheriff cry. There, there, there. Now then, why don't you just hand over that purse of yours? Good, good. And how about all of those nice clothes? We could use some nice clothes. Hmm, Little John, might we have something for the good sheriff to wear home? Well, with those eyes and that skin tone, it's a challenge. But, uh... I think I have just the thing. Did you find Robin Hood, sir? <laughs> ah! Sorry, sir. Anyone have any more questions? Come on. Hello? Have you seen Ellie yet? You won't find Ellie here anymore, Joe. Where is she? Well, that's an interesting question. Before I answer, perhaps you'll answer mine. Where were you yesterday? What do you mean? I received this receipt from the food bank, as well as a thank you for our donation. I didn't make a donation. In fact, I expressly forbade it. Where's Ellie? The form has your signature. But where's Ellie? 
you helped her willfully disobey her employer. I had to fire Hey, Joe. Come on, buddy. It's not so bad. Cheer up. It's a beautiful day outside. We can go back to the food bank. Mm. Joe, what's wrong? It's awful. But what happened? You know, Ellie, the lunch lady? Sure. She knows about my allergies, and so she always takes the coconut off my cupcakes for me. Yeah, she always gives me extra pineapple on our fruit cups. Well, I got her fired. What? How? Hmm. I smell a bison. I helped her take some of the leftover cafeteria food to the homeless shelter, but Mr. Bison found out, and he fired Ellie. Well, he can't do that. Yes, he can. Principal Leonard's out of town, so we didn't have to ask anyone. Well, Principal Leonard gets back this afternoon. Maybe we can ask her if... That's it. When Principal Leonard gets back, I'll tell her that it was all my fault and that Ellie should get her job back. If you do that, you could get suspended, Joe. But we just can't let Mr. Bison win like that. He's wrong. Joe's right. We have to do something. Maybe there's something we can all do. Hello. Excuse me. Hey, everybody, listen up. Thanks. Listen. Today at lunchtime, you'll all go into the cafeteria. But today, Ellie won't be there. She was fired this morning. Yesterday, she went out of her way to donate some of our leftover food to the hungry. But since that's against regulations, she was fired. She was always nice to all of us, and you guys know it. Yeah, and that food just would have been thrown away. I helped her, and today I'm not having any lunch. I'm going to walk right by that line and right through those doors to wait for Principal Leonard to come back. Heads up, Joe. There's something rotten on the playground. Joe Talbot, stop this at once. You are already in serious trouble. Ellie deserves her job back. Yeah, and we're going to help her get it. I can't say what you'll do, but I know what I'm going to do. Young man, do not toy with me. I dare you to say one more word. the right thing, Joe. Just like Robin Hood. In Nottingham, the evil sheriff dared Robin Hood to show his face. He held a huge archery competition, knowing that Robin Hood wouldn't be able to resist showing up to win it. beloved, the beautiful Maid Marian, was able to see through all of his clever disguises. Your aim is true, good farmer. Well, I'm no Robin Hood, but thank you, fair lady. You'd be better off if you were no Robin Hood. Oh, Robin, can't you see that this is a trap? <laughs> Relax, my good lady. Half of the farmers here are very merry men, if you get my meaning. Besides, who can turn down a challenge like this? <laughs> Attention! The time has come for the final round. There are only two contestants remaining. Our own Nigel of the Guard. <clears throat> and the mysterious farmer, uh, unobtrusio of nowhere to... This is the final target. May the best man's arrow fly true. Begging all your pardons, but this Nigel is a fine archer. What do you say we call it a draw? I wouldn't want to embarrass anybody. There will be no draws. There will be a winner, farmer. Unless, of course, your shot lands exactly as close as Nigel's. <laughs> if you say so, my lord. Well, I guess it is a tie. Let's hear it for Nigel. Oh, 
Step forward, good farmer, and receive your reward. Ruben, look out! That's no way to reward the winners! <laughs> We're outnumbered! Back to the forest! I think you need to stay here with me, my lady. Mm. Oh, no! Ruben! What? <gasps> Marion, I'm coming! Ah, not now, your Robin Linus. You'd never even get near her. Come on. Don't worry, Robin. We'll figure something out. If only I'd taken her with us. I should have. If only I knew that she was all right. If I had some kind of sign. It's from the sheriff. No kidding. What does it say? It's ridiculous. He wants you to give yourself up in exchange for Maid Marian's freedom. Done! Robin, he'll kill you! I have a better chance of escaping than poor Marian. I've made up my mind. I'm going. Don't try to follow me, men! Follow him. Well, I suppose you're pretty proud of yourself. I guess no one was hungry. Oh, very funny. After your little speech on the playground today, I put in a call to your mother. We can't have students inciting a rebellion. Well, she's not here yet. And Principal Leonard should be back any minute now. Excuse me. Mom, before you say anything, I need to talk to Principal Leonard. Well, I think that's a good idea. You do? Well, yes. Joe, you're standing up for what you believe in. Even if you're in trouble with the school, you're not in trouble with me. I'm behind you too, Joe. You didn't happen to bring any lunch out with you. Oh, never mind. Ah, Mrs. Talbot. How good of you to come so quickly. As I explained to you, your son has been causing quite a bit of commotion. He has been fomenting bad behavior, and... And he's been acting the way his father and I always hoped he would. I have to tell you, Mr. Bison, I am very proud of my son. I can see where he gets his stubbornness. In any case, he has violated my regulations. Well, according to my regulations, I discuss my son with the principal. Whew! Ellen's arrived in the nick of time. You know, every so often, even heroes need help. When Maid Marian was captured by the sheriff, Robin agreed to take her place. It looks like we may have to hang you after all, milady. Go ahead then, you coward. <laughs> I'd expect no less from you. Boo! Oh, shut up, will you? Sheriff, I'm here, and I accept your offer. My life for the freedom of the lady. Finally, a responsible act from you, Robin Hood. Take him. Robin, you shouldn't have come. I couldn't leave you here, my love. All right, let her go. No. What? I said no. I'd rather keep her and hang you both. I can do that, you know. Hang them! <laughs> Men, defend me! Marion? Come along, Sheriff. Don't you want to join the fun? Seek the outlaw Robin Hood. Are you he? I am, Your Majesty. Your Highness. I had just captured the villain and was about to hang him. Were you? Had you done so, I would have hung you myself. Good Robin. Your timely payments have freed us from captivity overseas. We owe you much for that. It was but what any loyal subject would do, Your Highness. But many did not. We thank you. 
but still you are an outlaw. Much has happened since you left, sire, and the laws were no longer protecting your subjects. So I did. I do not regret what I have done, sire. Nor should you, good robber. Perhaps you would enjoy aiding the poor inside our law. <laughs> your majesty, think of me as a member of your family. <laughs> did you hear that, men? We're no longer outlaws. The king has returned. Long live the king! Long live the king! Enough! Enough! Quiet, please! Excuse me, Principal Leonard. Ellie! Listen, it's all my fault. I didn't even... No, Joe. I need to take responsibility. Principal Leonard, I gave you a proposal to set up a donation food plan. I'm the supervisor. That is my area. Why hadn't I seen this proposal? I didn't want to burden you. The food was just going to be thrown away. So I helped Ellie bring the food down to the food bank. I'm sorry if my son violated any rules, but I support his effort. Well, I've heard enough. Ellie, you've been involved in every charity activity this school has undertaken. I'll review your proposal and get right back to you. Can you return to work tomorrow morning? Of course! Thank you. And since your son is already involved in food donations, would you please become our first parent volunteer? I'd love to. Okay. All right, everybody, I believe it's lunchtime. Yeah! Okay. Would you join us? Oh, thank you. I will. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Bison, I need to see you in my office. Yay! Ellie's back! Let's eat! No, Wishbone. You can't go to school. What? No, I... I'm a fourth grader here, really. I... Hey, don't let the dog suit fool you. I'm just practicing for the school play. Hey, open up! Mark my words. Someday I will eat lunch in school. Many stories like Robin Hood call for fights. But on TV, a good fight is very different from a real fight. It might look like a riot, but every single move is carefully planned. Everyone is told exactly what to do by a professional fight coach. It's kind of like a dance. And like a dance, it takes a lot of teamwork. It's just as tough to get hit as it is to hit someone. And no one actually gets hurt. See, the only way to win this kind of fight is for everyone to do their jobs perfectly. That way, everybody wins. Even us big stars have to practice. Of course, my pal who plays the sheriff isn't really trying to slice me. Uh, right, Sean? I'm not taking any chances. Robin Hood, an exciting story and a great book. For Wishbone, provided by annual financial support from PBS viewers like you. And by... Chuck E. Cheese's. Explore the adventures of reading with PBS. Chuck E. Cheese's. Where a kid can be a kid. 7-Eleven. are food for thought. This is TBS. It's the riddle of the day. Hey, Pernell. Yeah? How did the farmer carry your cows? Uh, I don't know. How? In a moving van. Oh, man. Move. Get it? Move. This is PBS the Public Broadcasting Service. Reading Rainbow 
is made possible by a grant from the National Science Foundation, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the financial support of viewers like you, and by a grant from Kellogg's, who reminds you to take time each day for reading. Butterfly in the sky, I can go twice as high. Take a look, it's in a book, a reading rainbow. I can go anywhere. Friends to know and ways to grow, a reading rainbow. A reading rainbow. Well, Luke, we've got a perfect day for a barbecue, don't we? The whole gang will be here. It's gonna be great, huh? Yeah. Now, got my cooking utensils. Ooh, the grill's ready. The coals are nice and hot. Hey, Luke, have you seen my apron? Ah, there it is. Thanks, Luke. What a good dog. Out, out. Thank you so much, Luke. Luke is a great dog. Yes, I love you too. Dogs make wonderful pets. And so do cats. Now, here is a story about a cat who... <laughs> I I'm sorry, I, I really need to get that. I'll be right back. Oh, man, forget about cats, will you? It's dogs that you ought to be barking about. <laughs> Now here's a book that'll really wag your tail. It's called Martha Speaks. Huh? Martha Speaks by Susan Medall. Read by Joe Hayden. I hope that soup is gone when I come back in there. The day Helen gave her dog, Martha, alphabet soup, something unusual happened. The letters in the soup went up to Martha's brain instead of down to her stomach. That evening, Martha spoke. Isn't it time for my dinner? Huh? Huh? <gasps> Martha's family had many questions to ask her. Of course, she had a lot to tell them. Have you always understood what we were saying? Oh, you bet. Well, why don't you come when we call? Oh, you people are so bossy. Come, sit, stay. You never say please. Do dogs dream? Day and night. This morning I dreamed I was chasing a giant meatloaf. Alphabet soup became a regular part of Martha's diet, and the family had a wonderful time surprising people. Yo, Rinty, good dog. How's the flea problem? They ordered pizza from a different restaurant every night. How much do I owe you? They taught Martha how to use the phone. Pretty soon, more than pizza was being delivered. But I didn't order any barbecue. <laughs> oh, it's here. Family and friends were amazed. Please pass the bones. Although there were those who doubted. There is no such thing as a talking dog. Martha always had the last word. Speak, Martha. Woof! Just kidding. But there was a problem. Now that Martha could talk, she said exactly what was on her mind. Why is that man so fat? Mom said that fruitcake you sent wasn't fit for a dog, but I thought it was delicious. 
Who did it? She did. No, he did. Helen did it. She wondered why her family was mad at her. But she kept on talking. Oh, I've seen this program. You want me to tell you what happens? The giant reptile did it. Oh, and the little kitten gets blamed. But it's okay, because Ninja Woman she and She talked while man. they were trying to There's read. There's a poodle over on Circuit Street I'd really like to play with. He's small, but oh, what a dog. And speaking she of small... She talked and I was talked. in the back alley to a poor but loving mother. Although she was a mixed breed, Mama was determined to raise us puppies right. Blah, 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 blah. Until her family One, could six, not seven, stand. Seven, and said, Martha, please, please shut, shut up! What's wrong? You talk too much. You never stop! Sometimes I wish you would never learn to talk. Martha was crushed. The next day, Martha just lay quietly beneath the kitchen table. At first, her family enjoyed the silence, but after a while, they became worried. Helen offered bowl after bowl of alphabet soup, but Martha had lost her appetite for letters. Martha's family wondered if she'd ever speak again. Then one evening, when her family was out, Martha heard the sound of glass breaking. Oh, a burglar, thought Martha. I better call the police. She carefully dialed 911. But when she opened her mouth to speak, Martha hadn't eaten a bowl of alphabet soup in days. Martha raced to the kitchen. She barked. She growled. She tried to look ferocious. The burglar wasn't frightened. He picked up a pot from the stove. Oh, thought Martha. It's taps for sure. But to her surprise, the burglar put the pot down on the floor in front of her. Here, doggy, have something nice to eat. The burglar smiled as he closed Martha into the kitchen. Dumb dog. Lucky for me, I like alphabet soup. When Martha's family returned, they found the police removing the burglar from their house. How did you know he was robbing our house? asked Helen. Uh, we got a call at the station. Some lady named Martha. Good dog, Martha, exclaimed her happy family. <laughs> You're so right. Now Martha eats a bowl of alphabet soup every day. And sometimes she doesn't say anything at all. At least for a few minutes. That's so doggone inspiring. But hey, you want to see something really cool? Come on in. Have a biscuit. Don't worry, they're fresh. <laughs> now, check this out.
gets to me. You know, dog actors, they don't know how to act unless they're trained properly. That's where Michael Boxer comes in. Hi, a boy. That's a good boy. My name is Michael Boxer, and I've been training animals professionally for roughly eight or nine years. Good boy. In order to get a movie dog, not a pet dog, usually it ends up, we're looking for the dog at the pound, and what we're looking for mostly is energy and enthusiasm and Usually, as soon as you see the dog, you know that's the dog you're looking for. All right, this is Buster, and Buster and I are going to show you some some of the dog basics. Actually, some of the basics and some of the more advanced stuff that any good movie dog needs to know before he gets considered for his first part in movies or TV. So the first thing you need to work your dog is you got to give him a reason to work. So what we do is we get a nice little bait bag or a pouch, whatever you want to call it. And we usually use chicken or beef, and as you can see. It does a very good job of getting their attention. Look at that. That's a good boy. Watch that. Now, when I'm doing this, I'm going to be using a visual cue with my hand and a verbal cue with my mouth. The reason we use both is because a lot of times when we're working on a movie set, we can't make any noise, so we have to just use the visual cue. All right, Buster, let's go to work. Say hello to everybody. Speak. 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 Good boy. Sit up. Up high. Very good. And take a bow. Very good, Buster. Good boy. All right, come on down here. Let's show him some more advanced stuff. Good boy. Good boy. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Come over here. Stay. Okay, something comes into the backyard. It really scares you. You back up so you can watch it. Back up. Back up, Buster. Good boy. Back up. Stay, but you've stepped on a thorn. You're wounded. Show them how bad it hurts. Come on. Easy. Easy. Good boy. Easy. Good boy. All right. That's a good boy, Buster. I'd Very say it's the most important to have a good relationship with your dog because in order to train your dog, there has to be trust. There has to be an understanding and kindness and love and affection in order to get the dog to do the things you want it to do. Good girl. That's very good. Jeez, look at that face. Hi, Perky. One of the cutest behaviors I think you see in the movies is having a dog put their feet up and hide their eyes. And from a trainer's point of view, it's actually very simple to teach. Um, obviously, the first thing you're going to have to teach is the dog to put their feet up. So what we're going to do is that to begin with. Move back to an area where she can only get her feet up. Good girl. Come here, Casey. Put your feet up. Kind of guide her a little bit. Give her the piece of food. That's very good. That's a good girl. And once you've done that a few times and she understands what put your feet up is, and then you're going to go to the next step, and that's going to be to put your head down. So what you're going to do is get another piece of food, stay, and you're going to put it between her legs and tell her to put her head down, give her the piece of food that's down there, and tell her to stay. Hold it, stay, stay, stay. Good girl. That's very good. Very good. Girl. And after you've done that a few times and you feel comfortable that the dog knows both behaviors, you bring it to somewhere else, a new area, stay. Casey, put your feet up, stay. Hide your eyes. Stay. Head all the way down. Stay. Okay, that's a good girl. Very good. Good girl. Very good. That's a good girl. Oh, good girl. If you have to have a pet, the dog is the greatest pet you can have because everything is unconditional. You can take a dog anywhere. You can do anything with the dog. And no matter what happens, he always loves you. All 
All right, well, that pretty much sums it up for me. Buster, is there uh, anything else you'd like to say before we go, buddy? Oh. All right, go on over there and do your thing. I wonder where LeVar is. He's probably still on the phone. Well, it's time for my walk. Come on, you take me. I bet you never thought much about it, but here's how the world looks from a dog's eye view. Uh -oh, hold on just a second. I gotta smell these flowers. Ah. I really shouldn't be doing this. It's one surefire way for me to end up in the doghouse. But I can't resist. Hey, LaFar! I thought you were gonna give this to me. There's my friend Phoebe. Hey, Phoebe! You know, I really like her, but she's kind of stiff. You know, some mornings, all you feel like is a good sniff in the grass. <laughs> Who is this? Hi, how you doing? I'm sorry, what did you say? Oh, a ribbit. I don't speak the amphibian. Boy, a little jumpy, aren't we? I guess they come on too strong sometimes, huh? Hi, Luke! That's my friend Nina. I just love this kid. And you know something? I think she kind of loves me, too. She's so cute. This is the primo hydrant in the whole neighborhood, and it's mine. Oh no, it's Elaine, our annoying neighbor. I hope she doesn't see me. Look. Oh. No, 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 no. I see you hiding behind that tree. You come out here right now, my little precious gummy. Come on. Oh, come on. brother. Well, come what are you going to do? Uh, I can't insult her. She's a nice come person. I think right I'm the only friend she has. I have a little treat for you. Come on. Oh, no. Oh, my no, not that. Baby. Not that. Oh, the hell? Oh, my little Luke. Yes, I love you. I love you too, Elaine. I have a treat for you. You know me. I'll eat anything. I gotta wonder, how long has this thing been in her pocket? Hey, there's Lynn, our mail carrier. Hi, Luke. How are you? I got some mail here for LaVar. You gonna take it in? All right, here it goes. thought that was cool. Wait till you see what my friends can do.
There's nothing that I love more than a nice, juicy book. Reading is... Hmm. Reading is the most important thing that you could... Hmm. Burgers are good, though. But reading can improve your mind. But burgers taste so good and the meat is so juicy and... I'm having a burger. I'm having a burger and I'll read later. Is that a problem? Hi, I'm David. One of the funniest books I ever read is Earth Hounds, as explained by Professor Zargal. Professor Zargal is an alien. He's teaching his class about Earth Hounds, what we Earthlings know as dogs. He says Earth Hounds have tusks in the front and a waggler in the back. He says Earth Hounds are sneaky. They eat wiggle beats and the living room rug. Earthlings love to play games with their earth hounds. I think Professor Zargal's observations were correct. I also think that earth hounds will make you howl with laughter. Did you ever wonder how it feels to live a dog's life? I mean, you can't even sit on the sofa and no treats unless you entertain your owners. Well, here's a dog who's got it made, in this story called The Night I Followed the Dog. The boy who tells this story thinks his dog is pretty ordinary. Then one night, something happens to change the boy's mind. The dog is in the bathroom, dressing for a nice night out. You'll never believe what happens next. The dog owns a club where other dogs can go to hang out. Being with his dog makes the boy feel like a movie star. A waitress brings him some biscuits. Later on, the dog ends up dancing with the glamorous greyhound. I'm Crystal, and my advice to you is to think twice before you tell your dog to do anything. As you can see in this book, he may have a lot of other things on his mind. Hi, my name is Aditi. Here is a book about a teeny tiny dog named Dolly. The book is called My Puppy is Born. When Dolly is born, she is very small. I just want to squeeze her. The puppies need their mother at first. They get milk from her body. They can't see or hear when they're newborn. Their eyes won't open until they're a little bigger. I like the part when Dolly runs all over the place. I'd love to have a puppy like this. This is an exciting, colorful book. It made me want to get a puppy. Don't miss it. Aren't we dogs the cutest? I mean, look at this, bones on the wall. And look at me, I'm adorable. You'd like to be like me, wouldn't you? Come on, you can admit it. Just a little. Woof, woof, woof. Whoa, woof. speaks. Well, that's a pretty good book. I like this book. You know, I'll tell you what. One day, we'll do a show about dogs and you can host, huh? How's that? I bet you'd like that, huh? Now, where was... Ah, the cat book. Uh, that's funny. I thought I left it here. What? I wonder what happened to that book. I'll see you next time. <laughs>
Today's Reading Rainbow Books are Martha Speaks by Susan Medaw, published by Houghton Mifflin Company. My Puppy is Born by Joanna Cole, photographs by Margaret Miller, published by Morrow Junior Books, a division of William Morrow and Company. Earth Hounds as Explained by Professor Zargel, written by Jean Willis, illustrated by Tony Ross, published by Dutton Children's Books, a division of Penguin Books USA, Incorporated. The Night I Followed the Dog by Nina Layden, published by Chronicle Books. Funding for Reading Rainbow is made possible by a grant from Kellogg's who urges you to explore the joys of reading. Funding for the series was also provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the National Science Foundation, and the financial support of viewers like you. This is TVS! Coming up, it's story time. Kino and his friends are reading your favorite books with the coolest pictures. And you're invited. Let's go! <laughs> Story time, coming up next in PTV Park. There's another pointer from Paula Poundstone. Use your imagination. Okay, so it's raining out and you're feeling kind of sad. You could imagine that you're in the kitchen making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And just as you go to spread the peanut butter, a bird grabs your knife and takes off and hangs you right off the edge of a star. And you land on the moon and you're in charge of absolutely everything. <sighs> Sorry, got kind of carried away. It didn't just happen. Thomas Edison tried to invent a light bulb using cotton. Uh -huh. It didn't work. Then he tried coal. Uh -huh. That didn't work. Then he tried a metal called tungsten. I said tungsten. Yay! A light bulb. It didn't just happen. You have to keep on trying. Lamb chop, are you real? Yes, I'm a real puppet. <laughs> Cornell, are you real? I'm a real pee pal. Oh, we're not the same. <clears throat> Do you think it's okay for us to play together? Sure. Just like kids, we can be good friends in spite of our differences. Good. Uh, how about Sherry? Is she real? Oh, she's almost human. <laughs> this is a story about a curious kid. Got an idea watching the wind. She asked how, she asked why. Took some of this and gave that a try. Then she found something that would float. Put a mind to it and made herself a boat. You are watching PBS, viewer supported public television. Something's coming! Go Yanny! It's PTV! Yay! What's a story, amigos? This is Kino with some cool stories for today's story time. In our first story, a little magic makes life more colorful for Winnie and her cat. Now, Winnie could see Wilbur when he sat on a chair, when he lay on the carpet, when he crawled into the grass. Join Ellen DeGeneres in a search for a lost parrot. They searched in large cities, in undeveloped countrysides. Then, Meshach Taylor reads about a young boy who leaves his best friend home when he starts school. And he was very upset. So was Teddy. And a book about the special relationship among three sisters. I'm one of the three that likes the subway. Major funding for Storytime is made possible by a grant from Helen and Peter Bing, so that families everywhere can share the joy of reading with their children. Additional funding is provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting by the annual financial support from viewers like you. And by the National Endowment for Children's Educational Television.
you know. Oh, whoa. Hiya, Pete. How you doing? Oh, boy, you are one beautiful bird. You're, you're a rainbow with feathers. Oh, that's pretty good. He really is kind of a rainbow with feathers, isn't oh, he? Yeah, yeah, there's, there's blue and yellow and green and, and, huh? Wow, you're drawing Pete's portrait. Yes, I am. And you know, I was just about to add the rainbow, the colors. Huh. You know what, Lucy? What? Every time, every time I look at Pete, I get a happy feeling. Well, sometimes colors can affect the way you feel, you know. They can? Oh, you bet. Well, look, this bright red is a happy color, isn't it? Uh-huh. And so is this yellow uh -huh. and this blue and this green. Huh. Whoa! How'd you do that? Well, sometimes you can make other colors out of other colors. And watch. I mixed the yellow with the blue, and I got green. Now, if I mix a little blue with red, I get purple. Whoa, cool. It's like magic. It, it kind of is, isn't it? Uh -huh. And you know what you just did? No. What? You just reminded me of a story, a wonderful story, that mixes color and magic. Oh, I did? Oh, all right. Story, story, story. <laughs> all right. Look, why don't you read it, okay? Mm, okay. It's called Winnie the Witch, and it's by Corky Paul and Valerie Thomas. Mm, okay. <sighs> Winnie the Witch lived in a black house in the forest. The house was black on the outside and black on the inside. The carpets were black. The chairs were black. The bed was black, and it had black sheets and black blankets. Even the bath was black. <laughs> Winnie lived in her black house with her cat, Wilbur. He was black, too. And that is how the trouble began. When Wilbur sat on a chair with his eyes open, Winnie could see him. She could see his eyes anyway. But when Wilbur closed his eyes and went to sleep, Winnie couldn't see him at all. So she sat on him. When Wilbur sat on the carpet with his eyes open, Winnie could see him. She could see his eyes anyway. But when Wilbur closed his eyes and went to sleep, Winnie couldn't see him at all. So she tripped over him. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> One day, after a nasty fall, Winnie decided something had to be done. She picked up her magic wand, waved it once, and abracadabra. Wilbur was a black cat no longer. He was bright green. Oh. <laughs> wow, a green cat. Weird. Now, when Wilbur slept on a chair, Winnie could see him. When Wilbur slept on the floor, Winnie could see him. And she could see him when he slept on the bed. But Wilbur was not allowed to sleep on the bed. So Winnie put him outside, outside in the grass. When Wilbur sat outside in the grass, Winnie couldn't see him, even when his eyes were wide open. Winnie came hurrying outside, tripped over Wilbur, turned three Ow! somersaults, and fell into a rose bush. Youch! <laughs> <laughs> this time, Winnie was furious. She picked up her magic wand, waved it five times, and abracadabra. Wilbur had a red head, a yellow body, a pink tail, blue whiskers, <laughs> and four purple legs. But his eyes were still green. Now Winnie could see Wilbur when he sat on a chair, when he lay on the carpet, when he crawled into the grass, and even when he climbed to the top of the tallest tree. Wilbur climbed to the top of the tallest tree to hide. He looked ridiculous, and he knew it. Even 
the birds laughed at him. Would you have laughed at him, Pete? <laughs> <laughs> Wilbur was miserable. He stayed at the top of the tree all day and all night. The next morning, Wilbur was still up in the tree. Winnie was worried. She loved Wilbur and hated him to be miserable. Then Winnie had an idea. She waved her magic wand and abracadabra. Wilbur was a black cat once more. He came down from the tree purring. Then Winnie waved her magic wand again, again and again. Now, instead of a black house, she had a yellow house with a red roof and a red door. The chairs were white with red and white cushions. The carpet was green with pink roses. The bed was blue with pink and white sheets and pink blankets. The bath was a gleaming white. And now, Winnie can see Wilbur no matter where he sits. <laughs> <laughs> what a great ending. Mm -hmm. Orange and green and blue and yellow are cool colors for a house. Oh, and for a parrot, <laughs> but not for a cat. No. Oh, speaking of Pete, huh? I I've got to yeah. get some fresh bird seed for him. Oh. Uh, will you keep him company while I'm gone? Oh, sure. No problem. Okay, I'll see you later then. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, Pete, it looks like it's just the two of us. <gasps> oh, <gasps> hey, I wonder if Pete'll sit on my finger. I could just open the door here for a second and see if he'll hop onto my hand. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <gasps> oh, oh, no! Oh, no, Pete! Pete, come back! Come back! Where'd you go? Oh, yikes! Oh, no! Oh, brother! I'm in trouble now. Oh, Mara, Mara, something's happened. Mara, Mara. Oh, no. Hey, Kino, look who's here. Kino, Kino, where are you? Oh, Mara, Mara, something's happened. You see, I just opened the cage door and Pete and... Uh, uh, hey, you have Pete. There he is. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> Well, he just uh, met us at the door. Kino Allen's here, and so is Allie and Zara and Shannon and Chris. We are going to read a story about a parrot just like Pete. Oh, oh, great. Oh, oh brother, that was a close one. <laughs> hi, Kino, and hi, Pete. Oh, hi, Ellen. <laughs> well, this is Pete, and he is Lucy's pet. You know, I'm surprised you left him out of the cage. Uh, well... I mean, you see, I opened up the cage and, and, uh, well, never mind. I'll tell you later. Okay, Kino. I'm never touching that cage again. Phew. So does everybody still want to hear a story about a parrot? Oh, please. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> then here we go. It's called The Last Time I Saw Harris, and it's from Frank Rimkowitz. He wrote it. Gather in. <laughs> Edmund's best friend was Harris. <laughs> Edmund taught Harris many things. Most of all, they enjoyed playing color flashcards. The harder Edmund tapped, the more excited Harris became. He knew red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. When I teach him purple, he will know the whole color wheel boasted Edmund. Mama was delighted. Perhaps he will become a great professor, she declared. I doubt it, said Papa. He'll probably just keep eating birdseed and learn a few more words. One day, tragedy struck when a fierce windstorm sucked Harris out the parlor window. <sighs> Grief-stricken, Edmund would neither eat nor leave his bed. Each day, Mama rented a new parrot from a talent agency. Fine and dandy, sugar candy, da-da-dum-dum. -dum. You know that song. And then she said, so which one is the dummy? 
You put your right foot in, you take your right foot out. Oh, when those birds come marching in. <laughs> Parrot of Spain, I adore you. <laughs> Alas, none of them were skilled at playing color flashcards. Edmund grew pale and thin. Papa summoned the chauffeur. Higgins, he said, take the car and find Harris. He'll be the only parrot that knows the entire color wheel, except for purple. Very good, sir, said Higgins. Hearing this, Edmund leaped from his bed. He gobbled a bowl of clear broth and almond croissant stuffed with avocado, grabbed his flashcards, bounded into the car, and drove off with Higgins. They searched in large cities and undeveloped countrysides. Days passed and their journey grew longer. Driving while showing flashcards proved difficult, and at times, Higgins lightly dented various parts of the car. He always dutifully replaced them with similar panels from nearby auto wrecking yards. At times, it seemed they were on the brink of success, but it was not to be. Reluctantly, they began their long trip home. They were almost home when Higgins slightly dented the trunk. He replaced it with a lovely purple trunk from a nearby auto wrecking yard, after which he and Edmund stopped for a lunch under a large, shapely tree. Edmund's frustration was so great, he could barely eat. They had tried so hard and traveled so far, he pounded the trunk with his fist as hard as he could. Purple! Came a shriek from the tree high above them. It was Harris. The happy trio rode home while Harris recited the entire set of flashcards over and over. What a joyous welcome. Mama searched for her guest list to plan a party. Edmund changed his clothes, and Higgins was allowed to take a nap. The end. Oh. <laughs> ah. well, wow. anyway, I huh? sure like happy endings when you're talking about lost parrots. Um, <laughs> gosh, aren't pets great to have? Yeah. Do you have any pets, Helen? I sure do. I have two dogs. I have a, a white Labrador retriever and I have a black, black little fuzzy mutt I got from the pound and he's cute as can be. <laughs> hmm. That sounds great. Do you have a pet, Allie? No. No pets? Do you want a pet? Just a fish. Just one fish. Well, that's a pet. A fish is a pet. Okay, and <laughs> Zara, do you have any pets? I have two dogs and three cats. Wow, that's a lot wow. of pets. That's good. Do you have any pets, Shannon? Yeah, but they're not my. I got fish, but they're pets, but they're not mine. They're my brother's. Well, we'll just say they're yours for now. And um, I got two dogs in the backyard. They're my, they're my, um, my friends. Do you have any pets, Christopher? <laughs> I have a white fur and a red, red ice rabbit. A rabbit? A rabbit. Uh -huh. Well, that's great. Yeah, and we've got Pete right here who wants to talk to us. What do you have to say? Oh, oh, he's reminding me. He's reminding me about the other story. That's right. Do you want to hear another story? Yeah. Yeah. Do you yeah. want to hear a story about a friend who's sort of like a pet and sort of like a doll and sort of like a person, too? Yeah. yeah. Wait a minute. Sort of like a pet, and a doll, and a person, too? How can that be? Well, all of your questions will be answered when we hear the story as we join our friend Meshach on a family trip to the library. Well, what's the answer, Meshach? Pet, person, or doll? Well, I just happen to have the book that Mara and Kino were talking about, and it's called Eddie and Teddy. It's written and illustrated by Gus Clark. Now, why don't we try to find out what they're talking about that's kind of like a pet, kind of like a person, and kind of like a doll. Okay? Okay. Eddie and Teddy. Eddie and Teddy were the very best of friends. Wherever they went, and whatever they did, they went and they did it together. 
they had been together for years and years. Eddie just couldn't remember a time when Teddy hadn't been there. They'd shared every moment. When Eddie had gone to see Santa Claus, Teddy had gone as well. And when Eddie fell off the kitchen table and banged his head, Teddy fell too. So one day, when Eddie went to big school and mom said that Teddy should stay at home, Eddie was very upset. So was Teddy. But Eddie had lots of new things to do and people to meet. He soon cheered up. Teddy did. Mom tried everything. A story with a cuddle. A walk in the park to feed the ducks. Even some of the very special pink medicine. But it didn't help. In the end, Mom could stand it no more, and she sent him upstairs. She was very glad when it was time to pick up Eddie from school. <laughs> so was Teddy. <laughs> Eddie told him all about his day. And Mom told Eddie all about hers. Eddie felt very sorry for Teddy. That night, Mom had a word with Eddie's teacher. And the next day, when she took Eddie to school, Teddy went too. <laughs> he was as good as gold and has been ever since, from that day to this. So what, what is this guy, this Teddy guy? Is he a friend? Is he a pet? Or is he a toy? What is he? Yeah, you think so? What do you think? You think he's all three? You have anything like that at home? Um, yeah. What is it? A Jamaican doll. Yeah, Jamaican doll? Okay, I know about that. How about you? Do you have anything like that? Jamaican doll. You're a Jamaican doll too? You both like those Jamaican dolls. <laughs> Gee, it's sort of a riddle and a story all in one. What do you think, Kino? Was Teddy a pet, a doll, or a person? Hmm. Well, it seemed like he was a little bit of all three. He looked a lot like a teddy bear doll, but he behaved like a pet, or even like he could have been Eddie's little brother. You know, I had a teddy bear when I was little, and I really felt that he was like a real person, almost like a part of my family. Oh, so did I, when I was very, very little, of course. <laughs> <laughs> His name is Fuzzy. Well, there is one thing for certain. Eddie and Teddy were the best of friends. They were like family. Oh, Fuzzy's, oh, he's about this big, and his fur is sort of you know, golden. You know, I think we, you but know. But then, you see, I spilled some grape juice on him, and Mom had to wash him. You and, know what? And, and, I think Meshach has another story, and it's about a family. That's right. And he is ready to read it to his family right now. Oh, see, then his ear fell off, and... You know. <gasps> story? <laughs> oh, did I hear something about another story? Now? Oh, hey, wait for us, Meshack. <laughs> okay, now the name of this book is One of Three by Angela Johnson with pictures by David Solman. One of Three. Since I can remember, I've been one of three. Eva, Nikki, and me. One of three sisters that walk to school together, down the street together, one of the three in the sun and the rain. I'm one of the three that lives in apartment number two, has long hair and brown eyes, and can sometimes play hopscotch by the trash cans, if I ask, for a long time. On Saturdays, I'm one of the three that sits outside the bakery and looks and smells, and smells. I'm one of the three that squeezes into the taxi on snowy days with Mama, Aunt Sarah, and Grandma, 
and it's warm there. I'm one of the three that looks just like our mama, smiles just like our daddy, and holds hands with my sisters in the store, looking like triplets, almost. I'm one of the three that likes the subway, the people on it, and the way our feet hang over the seats. I'm one of three who lives over the flower shop. Mr. Lowen still gets all our names wrong, but he gives us each a daisy every time. We walk down the street like stair steps, and I'm in front. Sometimes Eva and Nikki say I'm not invited to go with them, not to the park, the store, or sometimes even for a walk. I'm left behind, not one of three, just one. Then Mama calls me sister and says, I'm too little to go there or do that, so maybe I just want to help her paint or read to her. Daddy says that I have to be the baby sometimes and keep Mama and him company. Just sometimes. I miss Eva and Nikki and me. But when it's just Mama and Daddy and me, it's a different kind of three. And that's fine, too. All right. So what does that remind you of? Um, Yasmin Yeah? Uh -huh. when, when Yasmin goes up with to visit her friends sometime and leaves you behind? Yeah. And then when you go and visit your friends and yeah. leave Tariq behind? Mm -hmm. oh. So it makes them, it kind of makes you feel bad sometimes when you get left behind, doesn't it? So, you too? You don't get left behind anymore. <laughs> you always go. Oh, gosh, that was a good story. You know, when I was little, I sometimes wasn't allowed to do things because, because I was too little. That really bugged me. Mm. Well, I think everybody goes through that when they're little. Oh, uh oh I just realized something. Pete's, Pete's still out of his cage. I got to put him back before Lucy gets here. Uh, oh, no, not again. Pete, Pete, come back. Pete, Pete, come back. Hi, hi, everybody. Oh, boy, that's my Pete. He always knows when I've got him a treat. Oh, Pete, Pete, you sure know how to scare a guy. I could swear Pete's cage was closed when I left. Oh, uh, gosh, me too. Uh, well, actually, what I meant to say was, uh, <clears throat> you see, the cage was closed when you left, but... I wanted to see if Pete would sit on my finger, see? So I opened the door, and he came out. Oh. Well, that's okay, Kino. As long as you keep a close eye on him, I don't mind. But next time, please ask me, okay? Oh, yep, 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 sure. Whew. Hey, listen, let's not forget our story picks for today. We've got some great ones. Oh, yeah, yeah. First, here's a book that's really close to my heart and, and to Fuzzy's. It's called, Where's My Teddy? And I would like to recommend Job for Watilda. Just like Winnie, Watilda has a fondness for broomsticks and cats. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so much, Ellen, for coming by. Thank you. And thank you, Allie and Zara and Shannon and Christopher. Oh, and thanks for saying it was okay to let Pete out, Lucy. I was afraid you'd be mad at me. Oh, not at all, Kino. Uh, especially since you told me the truth as soon as I got back. The truth it always feels better, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and that's no lie. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodbye, everybody. And until next time... Keep, keep a story in your heart! So long, my little pajaritos. Bye-bye. <laughs>
storytime books are Winnie the Witch by Corky Paul and Valerie Thomas, The Last Time I Saw Harris by Frank Remkowitz, Eddie and Teddy by Gus Clark, One of Three by Angela Johnson, pictures by David Soman, Where's My Teddy by Jez Albro, and A Job for Watilda by Carolyn and Mark Buner. You can find these and other books at your local library. Major funding for Storytime is made possible by a grant from Helen and Peter Bing, so that families everywhere can share the joy of reading with their children. Additional funding is provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. By the annual financial support from viewers like you. And by the National Endowment for Children's Educational Television. Storytime is a production of KCET Los Angeles. Remember this? Well, you haven't seen anything yet. Because guess who's back with totally awesome, totally new mysteries to solve? You got it, the Ghost Rider team. And they need your help. Listen up, team. Get on the right track. There's a piece to be solved. Ghost Rider is back. All new mysteries is what you get. And one thing sure you haven't seen anything yet. Ghost Rider does the word thing with you. But different this time. And they're totally new. There's no telling what clues he'll send. So watch it. Solve it. Yo. Tell a friend. Ghost Rider is back. On PBS. Do the word thing with Ghost Rider, Sunday at 12 on KLRN. It's coming up, and I'm going down! I feel like I'm growing up because I've been learning more stuff. I don't like getting older sometimes because, like, you can't do things as you were when you were little. So it's like a uh, big fish in a little pond. This is PBS, the public broadcasting service. You're watching PTV. Ah! Exercise your head. Read. Ghost Rider is brought to you in part by Nike. Additional buffs that keep our team supreme come from public television viewers like you and me. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting. The John Dean Catherine T. McCarver Foundation. The Pew Charitable Trust. And the U.S. Department of Education. But you can't say it all in breath. I bet you can. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Be that way. I'll fix you, Cosmic Comics. Rejection. You're bad. Rejection. Yuck! Reject Stoop Doo! The mighty monster jamming Stoop Doo! Well, reject this, Meatball! And as for your Hoodman comic book contest, it's me who's gonna win. Stoop doo. <laughs> we don't know where he came from. He just showed up one night. What is that thing? He's not an alien. What is he? We think he might be a ghost. Be serious. You can see that? He wants to be friends with us. He can't hear and he can't talk. He can read anything. He takes letters and he writes with them. 
We're the only ones who can see him. That means he wants you on the team. You have to promise never to tell anybody about Ghost Rider. Hey, cool. We're the Ghost Rider team. We check out clues and solve mysteries. He's a ghost and he writes to us. Ghost Rider. What a trip. Man, this comic book contest is going to be great, Ghost Rider. I never thought I'd see something so cool in a science demonstration. <laughs> I know, right? Especially when that balloon burst in the tank. Man, all that stuff squirted out like blood. Yeah, it was totally gross. Whoa, you really know how to decorate a locker. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Say, you want a dirt bike sticker? I've got an extra one. No, thanks. I'll just have to spend four hours trying to peel it at the end of the year. Ghost Rider. What's he saying? It's a rally message. We used to call everyone together on the team when something important is going down. Go, go. What's the L for? Lenny. We've got to get to Lenny's. Come on. I don't know, Jamal. <laughs> Look, Ghost Rider sent a message to you, too. In your locker? You saw it. Come on. Well, so I figure if Scottie Pippen could be back in the very next game on a sprained ankle, I'll be back on the courts in no time. Yeah, so he can twist it again playing hot dog basketball. Hey, hey, I'm no hot dog. I'm a man of skill. Two hours ago, he was a boy in pain. I heard that. Aw, oh, leave him alone, Gabby. It must really hurt. Oh, no, no. It's nothing, really. Tina, look. Go. What's going on? It's a rally at Lenny's. We gotta go. go. Alex! Go. 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 We're going up to Lenny's for a minute, Mama. All right, be careful with that ankle, though. Take your time. Don't worry, Mama. We'll take care of him. Thank you, man. You're welcome. Lenny, tell us. No, I want to wait for Jamal. Tell us now. Tell him later. Who is it? Hey, Jamal, open up. Hi. Look who I brought along. Rob. Hey. So, this is Rob. This is my sister Gabby, and this is Tina. Hi. Hi. He received the rally call when I did. In his locker, though. So, are you going to be on the team now? I don't know. Don't worry, he'll come around. What happened to you? Well. I was directly under the basket, right? When I jumped up really, really high above all the other people to snag this offensive rebound. And he twisted it. <laughs> well, I'll be all right anyway. <laughs> so what's up? That's what we've been trying to figure out. OK, OK. This is great stuff, you guys. You're going to love it. I was down at the comic book store when I saw this poster about this new character from Cosmic Comics. His name is Hoodman. Hoodman? Yeah. His real name is Dennis Hudson, and he lives in the hood. And that short for neighborhood? Well, duh. Sorry. Anyway, Dennis doesn't like the bad stuff he sees going down in the streets. But it feels like he can't change anything until one day these aliens... Aliens? Yeah, from another galaxy. They suck him right up into their spaceship, and they give him this magic hooded sweatshirt. And when he puts up the hood, he becomes super strong, bulletproof, and really fast. He becomes Hoodman. Okay. So? 
and he fights injustice, intolerance, and people with bad attitudes. Uh, that's great and all, well, but... Well, there's this contest, see? And all these places you have to go in Brooklyn. What? Huh? It's sort of like a race. Whoever gets to the end first wins. What end? I don't get it. It's simple. Here are the rules. Oh, and there's this great map. Oh, and I forgot about the special agents. They'll be waiting at each place when you go there to give you... Lenny, some... Lenny, chill, okay? What? <laughs> Let me get this straight. You called a rally to get us to help you win a race, a contest? Yeah. I thought you said rallies were for important things. They are. This is. Um, I think you have my mother calling me. Yeah, yeah me too. I forgot to study. Wait a minute, guys. I thought everybody was going to love this. Love it? We don't even know what it is. Yeah, there's places on a map, rules, and this hood man guy. All right. I must have left out something important. How about letting me take one more look? Okay. There's so many important things here. Let's see. I told you about Hood Man, and about the contest rules, and all the places on the map, and the fact that the winner gets to... Oh, I forgot the most important thing! The prize! The winner gets to star in a comic book! Star in a comic book? Yeah, with Hood Man. Hey, I can go for that. We might even get famous! We've had some superhero adventures of our own. So let's do it. Come on, we could win this thing. Hoodman contest, here we come. Man, this contest is so easy. Comics. This contest is mine, right on down the line, because I know where to go and just who to show. And I stone cold won't be slow. Everybody's stoop dude is here today. So let me hear you say, yay. OK, guys, we've got to get organized if we're going to win. You got it, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> so where do we start? There's so much stuff. I know, Claude. Claude? Give me a hand, it's heavy. Claude's bomb's easel. She named him after her favorite painter, Claude Monet. Every time we move, Dad thinks about giving him away. But we just can't do it. Claude certainly has seen the world. <laughs> so how's he going to help us win this hoodman contest? We can tack stuff up on him. Excellent. Well, you have the contest rules. We're going to need to look at them a lot. Right. What about these information sheets about the places on the map? There's not enough room for everything. But the map, we should put that up. OK. What a great map. Yeah, and it's got all the possible places to go in the contest. It's like a treasure hunt. Yeah, you're right. Aquarium, Boathouse, Brooklyn Academy of Music, Coney Island Amusement Park, and Prison Ship Mar Martyr's Monument. So the rules say that there are going to be four comic book panels in all. Right. And each one has got clues in it that'll lead to a different place on the map. And whoever gets to the fourth place first wins the contest? Right. How do we know which place to go to first? We can look for clues in the comic book panel. And we check them on the information sheets. What kind of clues? That's what we've got to figure out. We can handle that. Let's get started. 
Look at those guys. Hey, Ghost Rider's checking it out, too. Evil-looking dudes, all right. Let's see what it says. Dr. Kill and his thugs burst into a neighborhood museum. This thing's called a wishing stone. Cool. Yeah. Next. This boat is sunk, Dr. Kill. And I've got the wishing stone, Mr. Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> what does his boat is sunk mean? Like he's out cold on the floor. I wonder what Dr. Kill needs a wishing stone for. <laughs> Probably to wish himself a better looking haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what's next. Meanwhile, Dennis Hudson's homing device alerts him to trouble. Yeah, that watch on his wrist is glowing. And he puts up his hood and he becomes Hood Man! <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, what clues on this panel will lead us to the first correct location? Some of the words are darker than the others. They're in bold. Bones, boat, hunter, and Walt Whitman. So? Maybe they're in bold because they're more important, as in clues. Right. Boat. What? Boat, boathouse. It's one of the places on the map. All right, Gabby, let's go. Hold it, hold it. What about all this stuff about the places? Who needs it? Yeah, let's just go. Come on, Jamal. I knew it. I just knew it. I'm first. Am I right or am I right? Excuse me? Greetings! Stoop dudes the name, winning's a game. Now give me five since I am first to arrive. <laughs> Enough pleasantries. Now can I have my panel pretty, please? Are you sure you're 16 or under? You look a little mature for the contest. Well, I'm just big for my age. See, my whole family's big. Take my little brother. He's the size of a minivan and he's only 10. Now how about laying that next panel on me pretty, please, Miss Agent Ma'am? <laughs> What's the big idea? You got here first, but this isn't the right place. Oh, no. And besides, where's your cosmic clue book that lists your clues and shows how they fit together? Oh. Sorry. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. You just work here. No hard feelings, I. But give me some skin, because I'm still going to win. <laughs> Is this the second panel? Sorry, kids, but your first panel didn't lead you to the right place. Oh, oh. man. Here, let's see your cosmic clue book. No, not even close. You need to list all the clues and how they fit together. Sorry, guys. We should have looked at our other clues. And it's 5.30. These special agents leave the locations at 6. Come on, we can still do it. Let's meet tomorrow after school. We just gotta get into that comic book. Fools! They think they're gonna beat the stupendous stoop dude. <laughs> well, they better think again, because I got a mind like a steel trap. Zip, zip, zap! <laughs> Come in. Hey, busy? I was just reading. What do you got? Oh, Red Pony. Good book. I thought you read this one already. Yes, sir. I really like it. Have I told you that there's a youth center in the neighborhood? Yes, sir. And that they've got a really great sports program? Yeah, you've told me. Mm. Well, as you know, it's uh, baseball season, and they've got uh, tryouts all week this week for the baseball team. Baseball. Well, listen, you might at least go over there and check it out, huh? I mean, it's, they've got all kinds of activities going on over there, and who knows, you might meet some guys that are just dying to be your buddies. 
but I might already have... Okay, Dad. I'll check it out. Okay. Good. See you later. That's it. It's Jamal. Sorry I'm late. Where's Rob? I don't know. I waited for him, but he didn't show. Hey, guys! Ghost Rider! What are Thwack and Wham? Huh? Oh, <laughs> he means the comic book words in the Starburst. He doesn't know what they mean. Well, they're not actually real words. Yeah, there are sounds that describe what the thugs are doing. doing that. Wow, imagine trying to read a comic book without being able to see the pictures. We ought to tell him what's in them. Bones, Boat, Hunter, and Walt Whitman. What about that skywriting, H and O? That's just skywriting, I think. But why is it there? It could be a clue in code. But they're not in bold. I think we should just stick with our list. Here's information on all the places on the map. Let's see if the words on this list fit in with any of the places. The Aquarium, the Coney Island Amusement Park, Brooklyn Academy of Music, and the Prison Ship Martyrs Monument. Martyrs? You know, people who give up their lives for what they believe in. Right. Hey, check this. At Coney Island, there's a bearded lady who swallows a sword. <laughs> <laughs> but what about our clues? Nada. Man, these martyrs were something else. They... Hey, wait a minute. I think I've got something. There was a poem written about them. That's great. But what's the clue? Well, it was written by an American poet named Walt Whitman. He's the last clue on our list. What else is there? Let's read the sheet. Here's the word bones. It talks about the bones of the men who died. And there's Hunter. One of their ships. A ship? A boat is like a little ship. Right. Bones. Boat. Hunter. Walt Whitman. The place has got to be. Prison Ship Modern's Monument. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's write these clues down before we go. And how they fit together. Better yet, you better write them on the way there. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. There's a special agent. You guys go on ahead. I'll catch up. Let's go. Here's our cosmic clue book. Are we in the right place? Let's see now. Bones, boat, hunter, Walt Whitman. 
A boat is like a ship. Hunter is the name of one of their ships. The bones are the men who died. Walt Whitman wrote a poem about them. Mm-hmm. You got it down, all right. This is it. <laughs> this is the place. Oh, really? Yes! yes. yes. Way to right. go! Hey, you mean no confetti? Not a speck. But I do have a brand new panel, number two. Yes! Right! <laughs> <laughs> Shell offs. I deal with you my own special way. After I get my panel, that is. <laughs> Take it, I've already been beaten to the first locale. Relax, it's the first person that gets the last location and wins. And that's gonna be me, my man. He just marked my word. Bones, boat, hunting. Walt Whitman. You sure you're 16? It's a hormone thing, all right? And I thank you not to mention it again. Is this again? Uh, 148 feet. And buried under all our feet in 22 lead coffins are the bones of 11,000 American Revolutionary soldiers. Some who were African American slaves who were freed. And slaves that had escaped. Right. Right under our feet? That's kind of spooky. How did they get there? Well, they fought for the American army during the Revolutionary War. They fought without any pay. They were captured by the British and put on a ship in the bay. No light, hardly any air or food. They died by the thousands of what they believed in, for freedom. That's why they call them martyrs. They were buried in the sands of the bay, but a lot of their bones washed out of the sand onto the shore. Wow, that's so sad. Finally, after many years, they got a proper burial. And this monument. Yo, special agent. I know we're in the right place, because we got all the clues down. Plus, how they fit. We'd like panel number two, please. Uh-oh. Competition. We're gonna win this, baby! See you behind that! I wouldn't bet on that if I were you! Ghostwriter is brought to you in part by Nike, the company that believes every kid has the right to play. Hector, what do you get when you add a mystery, a ghost, public television viewers like you, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and the Pew Charitable Trust? A mega litter of Pecoro? No, Ghostwriter. I am one of you. One of you, one of you, one of you, one of you. I am one of you. 
of you. I am one of you. I am one of you. I am one of you. of the Acme Crime Net Emergency Network. For the next 30 seconds, you will be exposed to fast, furious fun and pan-global pilfers. This is only a test. had been an actual emergency and you were in need of geographical info and crazed entertainment, an announcer would inform you what time to tune in to Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? Watch it Monday and Wednesday at 4, only on UNC TV's Just for Kids. To read or not to read? Hmm, that's the question. So what's the problem? Reading's lots of fun. For lots of reasons. Yeah, name one. Okay, when you read, you get to travel to faraway places. And you get to meet some very unusual characters. And you get to make believe you're them. I said name one, guys. And you can read wherever you want. In a car. On a bed. In the park. In the tub. Shh, quiet please, I'm reading. You are watching PBS, viewer-supported public television. You're watching Channel 56, WTVS Detroit. Local broadcast of Where in the World is Carmen San Diego is made possible in part by... NBD, the right bank can make a difference. And by the members of AAA Michigan. AAA Michigan sponsors geography education through the How to Read a Map program in middle schools. Today's caper is bankrolled by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and viewers like you. And by Delta Airlines, because geography is important for kids everywhere. Delta Airlines, you'll love the way we fly. All these people want to know. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? And one of these gumshoes could find her. He once lived in Pakistan and knows how to speak Urdu. Meet Mohammed Umar. <laughs> She's traveled in the eastern U.S. and collects X-Men comics. Meet Valentina Gutierrez. He's been to Sunset Beach, North Carolina, and loves baseball. Meet Christopher Moravec. And here's Acme's senior agent in charge of training new recruits, Fred Lee. All right, all right, thank you. Thanks, man. Thanks. How you doing, guys? Thanks a lot. Hey, Christopher. <laughs> Good to see you, man. Hey, Valentina. Hey, Muhammad. Hey, listen, folks. They're with me every day. Rock the <laughs> Good Quick reminder to you guys, the one of you that catches Carmen Sandy today is going to get that trip to anywhere in North America, and that is not bad, ladies and gentlemen. So, Chief, who are we after? This is Eartha Brute. Eartha Brute. <laughs> if you're looking for brains, you won't find a trace. Between her two ears is a wide open space. Her last known whereabouts? Calgary, Alberta. Take a 10-minute drive from downtown Calgary and step millions of years back in time. You can do it at the Calgary Zoo's prehistoric park. It's North America's only major park to show dinosaurs in their natural environment. 
Of course, the dinos aren't real. They're life-size replicas, and they're surrounded by plant life and other prehistoric animals, which resemble those from the same era. Seeing dinosaurs in their natural habitat almost brings these long-dead creatures back to life. Or it did, until today. Oh, no. <laughs> when Eartha Brute clomped into Calgary in her cave gal best. She then proceeded to poach the mark of every prehistoric beast. And she probably still hasn't noticed that they aren't real. Gumshoes, I'm counting on you to crack today's case. Tyrannosaurus wrecked. Oh, yeah. Okay, guys, trying to find Eartha and the prehistoric park. To help you out, we're going to give you 50 Acme Crime Bucks. There you are. Every time you answer a question correctly, going to give you 10 more crime bucks, and the two of you with the highest score at the end of this round will then proceed to the next round. You okay, man? Okay. Let's get started then with our very first clue, and for our first clue, call out the SWAT team. It's time for that pesky fly again. I just flew in from the Atlantic coast where I was nearly eaten alive. Oh, they had these plants there called Venus fly traps that actually eat flies. Something about a lack of nitrogen where they grow makes them go after flesh. A plant lures you with the smell of its nectar. You fly in for a landing, then wham, you're caught inside its jaws. Its digestive juices get going and, oh, well, I can't go on. Thank heavens there are very few places where this plant grows wild. Now I know why one of them is called Cape Fear. Sorry, everybody. I caught him. And he's okay. He's okay. All right. Fly away. Be free. Be free. Ooh. Sorry about that. Okay, Gumshoes, name the state, if you will, please, where Earth has taken the prehistoric park. Is it West Virginia, Louisiana, or North Carolina? Remember the clues that we heard. Atlantic Coast, one of the only places where Venus flytrap grows wild, and Cape Fear, come up with an answer as quickly as, you're, as you can. And uh, once you're ready, hold your card up nice and high. There you go. Christopher's ready. Uh, Mohammed is now ready, and Valentina is now ready. Christopher, what do you say, bud? I said North Carolina. North Carolina, Valentina. I said Louisiana. Louisiana, Mohammed. North Carolina. North Carolina. Well, I can tell you this. South Carolina is the only other place in the world where the Venus flytrap grows wild. North Carolina. Nice job, Christopher <laughs> Mohammed. All right, gumshoes for our next oh, clue. Greg. Greg! Oh, that sounds like Scott. It sounds like we've got another Rockapella clue. All right, little Rockapella clue. Guys, I'm sorry, I thought this was a Rockapella clue. My mistake. Greg, go Greg. He's manly. Greg, go Greg. Come with me. Greg, go Greg. It's almost Greg. Huh? Listen to the story that I tell you, Greg. About a cook named Earth of Root. Earth of Root. Saw her on a lake in South America. She crunched it and stepped on my foot. Yes, she did. The lake you'll find is partly in Bolivia. The rest of it is in Peru. Yeah. Sanctuary, some Indians are living nearby. The name of it is Uru. Come here. You might find the island of the sun. Where legend says the Incas very first were born. For many people, it's the most sacred spot in the lake. The strongest woman that I know who has green hair You've seen how much she can bench press for yeah. She's wading through the water with a stolen zoo And it causes us distress Yes, it does It causes us distress We're in pain Rockapella, ladies and gentlemen Okay, Gumshoes, name the lake where Earth has gone Is it Maracaibo? Banyano? Or Titicaca, remember the clues that we heard in Bolivia and Peru, Uru Indians, and Sacred Island of the Sun. Come up with an answer as quick as you can, guys. Valentina is ready, so is Mohammed, so is Christopher. Christopher, what do you say, man? I said Titicaca. Titicaca, what do you think, Valentina? Titicaca. Titicaca, Mohammed. Titicaca. Everyone said the same thing. Everyone is right. Thank you very much. Nice job, guys. Now it's time for one of my most favorite parts of the show. <laughs> the lightning round, go! Yo, oh, man, oh, man, take cover! Woo! Is that it? We done? No. Are we finished? Okay. Uh, all these worth five uh, Agni Crime Bucks, and I can tell you these are all about Earth's most recent known whereabouts, which is Lake Titicaca. Hands on the buzzers. 
Gee whiz. Uh, here's the first question. Lake Titicaca's first steamships were made in England in 1862. How did such big, heavy boats get up to the lake? Were they A, carried in pieces by mules, B, helicoptered in on ropes, or C, hoisted on the shoulders of the British Navy? Uh, Christopher. Carried in pieces by mules? That's exactly right. Nice memory, too. Very good. <laughs> Five for you. Here's the second question. As recently as 1991, scientists found this on the bottom of Lake Titicaca. Am I talking about a sunken UFO, ancient gold relics, or a plug for draining the lake? Valentina. Um, ancient gold relics. Is right. Nice job. Five for you. Here's the last question, guys. A reserve near Lake Titicaca protects a rare member of the camel family that is valued for its wool. What? Oh, uh, Valentina. I'm sorry? A Vinuka. Is that okay, uh, judges? It is. Good job. Five for you. Vicuña. Vicuña is what we're looking for. Nice job, guys. Very nice job. Okay, listen. I have a uh, quick meeting with the chief. Greg, yeah. would you come in here, please? Yeah, I just said I had to get, have a meeting, and then I'll meet with you guys out in the alley for a little training session. You guys come with me. Hey, chief. What? Hey, that is a great... Great windmill, uh -huh. let me tell you. Thanks, Greg. You know, I had it installed this morning. It is a great way to save money. Mm -hmm. As of today, all office power comes from that windmill. Well, Chief, that is all well and good as long as the wind keeps blowing. But what if the wind dies down? Did you think about that? No, I hadn't thought about that. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe oh. you should give it some thought. Oh, great. Oh, now we've got no power. <laughs> I'm sorry. You should be. All right. Let's do the contest. Fine. Write down what got stolen and from where each time you watch the show. When you've collected four loots and locations, put them on a postcard with your name and address and send it to Acme Crime Net, P.O. Box 4300, New York, New York, 10163. Every day, we'll pick five people whose lists are correct and send them each a Carmen T-shirt. Here are today's winners. Congratulations, Congratulations to, to the winners. winners. Well, I guess the windmill thing was a failure. Well, now, come on, Chief. Hold on a second. Don't get down. I think I got an idea here. Don't we have one of those electric fans around here someplace? Yeah, it's over by the file cabinet. Okay. Why? Well, I have an idea, like I told you. Set that there. Turn this on here. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, that's... What the hell? <laughs> How did you do that? Very simple. I plugged in the fan and it blew on the windmill. But where'd the fan get the power? From the windmill. Yeah, but the windmill wasn't turning. Well, not until I plugged in the fan. Yeah. No, of course. Well, if you turn, you could... Well, you, that... You know, that, that actually kind of makes sense. It, if you don't think about it too much. Okay, guys, time for a little training exercise. Step right this way. Everybody pick one of these trash cans. What you're going to do is help me hunt for clues that are going to help us find our crook. And what better place to find those clues than right here inside the trash can. What you'll do is lift the lid off the trash can like this. Well, how are you? You'll pick a card. On one side of the card is a flag. On the other side is a clue. Then to finish up your assignment, all you'll have to do is take the lid and put it back on top of the trash can just like this. Let's see how fast you guys can do this. On your mark, get set, go. Find those flags, guys. Find those clues. Don't forget to put the lid back on top, though. That's the key. The lid on top, that one. Lid on top, lid on top, lid on top. Find the clues, guys, and put the lid on top. Put the lid on top. Put. There's two, there's three. Very close there. Valentina's first, then Mohammed, and then Christopher. Christopher, step right around this side. Okay. Valentina, oh, right, right where you are. You're fine, right there. Valentina, you say, uh, you finish the assignment first. Tell me what your card says. Locator. Locator. Okay, I can tell you that to find this country, you've got to uh, look for it in Central Africa. Okay, Mohammed, you are second. What does yours say? Mm, language. Language. I can tell you an official language of this country is French. And finally, Christopher, what does yours say? Capital. The capital of this country is Bangui. Valentina, you finished with your assignment first. What do you think it is? Is it Zaire, Central African Republic, or Chad? Central African Republic? It is right. Nice job, Tang. Yeah. That's for you. Yeah. Way to go, guys. Yeah. Okay, that tells me yeah. something coming in for Abby Budnet. Let's yeah. check the phone tap. Bertha, hole up in the hole. It's a deep cavern reached only by sea on the island of Muckleflugga. Mucky flow hole? Muckleflugga. It's part of an island group and is the northernmost island in Great Britain. But be careful. With 170 mile per hour winds, the seas can get pretty rough. Carmen, that's perfect for wind 
surfing. You're either very stupid or very brave. But I guess if the famous little ponies from these islands can take the winds, then you'll manage too. Oh, Carmen, can I ride the little ponies, please? I said they could stand the force of the wind, not the strain of your bulk. Okay, guys, name the islands where Eartha has taken the prehistoric park. Is it Orkney, Shetland, or Faroe? Remember the clues that we heard? Muckle Flugga, northernmost island in Great Britain, and famous small ponies. Valentina is ready. Christopher Muhammad is still thinking about it. Very close game we got going here. Anything could happen. As soon as you guys are ready. Now Muhammad is ready. Christopher is too. Christopher, what do you say, buddy? It's Shetland. Shetland. Valentina, what do you think? Shetland. Shetland. Muhammad. Shetland. Everybody said Shetland. Everybody is right. Thank you. Close game. Let's check the scores. Christopher now goes up to 85. Valentina, uh, 90. Muhammad, 80. Acme crime bucks. And we just received word that Eartha has left the Shetland Islands. So let's pick up the chase. Ooh, the chase. Very nice of you. Hello, fellas. As you know, all these <laughs> questions are worth five at me, Kramik, so hands on your buzzers, watch the monitor, listen carefully. Here we go. Eartha parked the park in Egypt's capital city. Mohammed Cairo. Is right. Then she jetted to Jordan. What peninsula did she fly over? Valentina. Sinai. Sinai Peninsula's right. Eartha careened into the capital city of Riyadh. Mohammed. Um, Saudi Arabia. Is right. Next, the brute ballooned over to Sudan. What sea did she cross? Valentina. Red. Yes. Eartha lumbered east across the border into a coastal country. Name it. Mohammed. Um, Eritrea. Eritrea is right. Nice job. That means at the end of the chase round, Christopher 85, Valentina 100, Mohammed 95. Crying bucks. Big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Telling you guys, this is a very close game. And uh, before we go much further, though, I want you to know that all of our answers have been verified by National Geographic World. National Geographic World. That's just what I said. And I want to remind you also of this. This is the final clue of this round, which means you have to decide how much you want to risk. You can risk 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, or 50 Acme Crime Bucks. Now, take a look right over here, if you will, please, because here is a portion of the world where we think Eartha is headed. Take a look at the map and think about it. Okay, looks like everybody's ready for our last and final clue of this round. Oh boy. Oh boy, that sound reminds me of a time when movies were black and white and sound was manoral. What do you have for me? Post-nasal condors stalk by night. I've heard that's true. It's cold, Greg. Earth is in a New York town near the Massachusetts border. It was once the center for a religious group named the Shakers. They were called that because members would shake with emotion during religious services. Right. And Greg, yeah. the children were never seen. Never seen, never seen. That's a code for a red convertible, I believe. It's not code, Greg. Right. The Shakers didn't believe in marriage or having children. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons there are so few Shakers left today. Wow, thanks a lot. Ah, one more thing, Greg. Yeah. The giant chicken serves only one. Who is coming up with these codes? I... <laughs> nice. Very nice. Hey, listen, one more thing. I... Ah. Oh, I got to tell you, honestly, that hurts a lot more than it looks. But I'm okay! <laughs> Gumshoes, name the town, if you will, please. That was very nice, you guys. The town where Earth has taken the prehistoric park. Is it Plattsburgh, New Lebanon, or Fish's Eddy? Remember the clues that we heard near Massachusetts border and former center for the Shakers. Also remember this. This is the final clue this round, so lay it down just like that when you're ready. Valentina's ready. Christopher, lay it down right there. Muhammad's still thinking about it. Now he is ready. Christopher, coming to you first. You have 85 Acme Crime Bucks. How much did you risk? I risked 40 Crime Bucks. 40 Crime Bucks. What'd you say, buddy? New Lebanon. New Lebanon is right. Nice job, Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> Muhammad, you have 95 Acme Crime Bucks. How much did you risk? Um, well, Greg, I risked 20 Crime Bucks. 20 Crime Bucks. This is going to stay close. What'd you say, Muhammad? I said Plattsburgh. Plattsburgh is not right. You're going to go down 20. Anything could happen, though. You're at 75. Valentina has 100 Acme Crime Bucks. How much did you risk? 20. 20 Crime Bucks. What'd you say, Valentina? 
New Lebanon. Nice job. Either way you put it, that means Valentina Chris are going on the next round. Muhammad, buddy, put it there. Great game, great detective work, got great stuff for you. Chief, that earth up brute. She's big and dumb, but still hard to catch. And you did a great job today. So I'm rewarding your efforts with our official Acme gumshoe gear. You'll get an atlas, this cool crime net cap with the official Acme logo in front, the official Carmen t-shirt, a subscription to National Geographic World magazine, and our new Acme Stealth pin quarter. It's the perfect tool for sleuths on a stakeout or for congratulating gumshoes. <laughs> See what I mean? Greg? Thanks a lot, Chief. Okay, guys. Ursa is in upstate New York. We're not going to waste a lot of time getting there. We're going to modem ourselves there to do that. We hold our breath for a long time. Greg? Uh, yeah. Are you in the gumshoes ready to modem? We're ready, Chief. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, okay, guys. Here we are. Everybody walk this way. Okay, guys, you know where to go. I'm standing here. The chief is going to be right up here with some very important information very quickly, so listen very carefully. Chief, what do you have for us? Okay. There are 15 places in upstate New York where you might find Earth of the Warrant or the prehistoric park. Let's look at a few of them. First up, the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. It's where young people train to become future leaders of our nation and where Eartha comes to find guys who are as pumped up as she is. Next, Niagara Falls. Over 700,000 gallons fall over the falls each second. Always a big tourist spot and a favorite with honeymooners. Eartha may be sneaking around here with one of those West Point cadets. Then check out the National Women's Hall of Fame in Seneca Falls. The hall celebrates the accomplishments of over 100 women in various fields from equal rights activists to artists, but not thieves. Finally, slide into the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. This wooden statue of Ted Williams is one of the many items of baseball memorabilia Eartha might try and lift. Now, gumshoes, stealing might be legal in baseball, but that's because nobody asked me. Now, nab Eartha at home and send her back to the bench for good. We'll do it, Chief. Thanks a lot. You guys know how this works. Christopher, you had the most at the end of the last round. You're going to go first. Remember, loot, warrant, and then crook. Go ahead, Christopher. Baseball Hall of Fame. Baseball Hall of Fame. Going, going, go! That's right. Sorry, nothing there. We turn that back around. Christopher, uh, I'm sorry, Valentina, go ahead. Kazoo Hall of... Kazoo Factory? Uh, Kazoo Factory. Very nice. That sounded just like a kazoo. Turn that back around. Christopher, go ahead. Finger Lakes. Finger Lakes. Jurassic Fracas. Nice job. You got the loot. You get a free turn. Go ahead, Christopher. American Falls. American Falls. It's a sad day. Yes, nothing there. We turned both of them back around, but you did find the loot. Valentina, your turn. Finger Lakes. Finger Lakes. Paleolithic Panic. Go ahead, Valentina. Harriet Tubman's house. Ah, uh, yes, Harriet Tubman's house. Uh, she helped hundreds of slave, uh, slaves escape on the Underground Railroad. Let's see. Harriet Tubman's house. Whoa, whoa. Nothing there. We turned both of them back around. Christopher, your turn. Finger Lakes. Finger Lakes. Pleistocene plunder. Go ahead, Christopher. Watkins Glen Grand Prix. Watkins Glen Grand Prix. Helen, start your engine. <laughs> Nothing there. We turn them back around. Nothing there. Valentina, your turn. Finger Lakes. Finger Lakes. Wilma! With oh, I, yes, that was great. Yes, you found the loot. Very good. Free turn. Go ahead. Woodstock. Woodstock. The warrant. Oh, you have the loot and you have the warrant. You have to get a free turn. Can you find Eartha? Mount Marcy. Is Eartha at Mount Marcy? Yeah, yes! Yes! Bud, stay here for this! Yes! Get out of that! Okay, now go over there. Put him, put him, there. Put him in jail. <laughs> nice job, Valentina. Stay right there. We'll talk to you in just a little bit. Hey, man. Very close. Nice detective work. Got some great stuff for you. Chief. Good detective work is a team effort, and today you made a huge contribution. That's why I'm awarding you all this great Acme gumshoe gear. And you'll receive two of these Acme secret senders. That means you and a fellow gumshoe will be fully equipped to zap messages to each other through the air. Plus, you can store phone numbers, even use it to control your TV and VCR. It's a great gift for a job well done. Congratulations!
Okay, Valentina, here's your portfolio. Inside is a piece of paper and also a pen. What I want you to do is write down where you'd like to go. If you catch Carmen San Diego and get that trip, rock a palace. Start the music, boys. <laughs> Nice. Okay, stick that right back up there. All we need now is a phone call, and there it is. Let me get this for us. And, oh, hello there. Hi. You never know what's inside these things. Hello? Yeah, she's right here. It's for you. I thought maybe I'd take some classes while I was in jail, but the warden says they don't have a nursery school. I need Carmen to help me, but she's in North America. Go get her. Okay, Valentina, now we know where we're going. Let's find out more about it. Chief, what can you tell us? Here's a list of places Carmen may have traveled. Northwest Territories, Canada. Alberta, Canada. Manitoba, Canada. New Brunswick, Canada. Lake Michigan. Montana, USA. Nevada, USA. Virginia, USA. Florida, USA. Sinaloa, Mexico, Jamaica, Honduras, Panama. Greg, let's go to the map. I feel good. You ready to do this thing? Yeah. All right, listen, I know you know what to do. Let me um, explain it to those who may not know, okay? What you've got to do is identify eight locations in 45 seconds. When you are right, you'll hear this sound. When you're wrong, you'll hear this sound. If you're wrong two times, don't worry about it. Just leave the marker there. We go on to the next thing. But if you're right eight times in 45 seconds, you're going to get that trip. And remember this. When you see one of these, the arrow, you're looking for a body of water. It could be, you know, an ocean or a river or a lake. Okay? Any questions? No. Anything you want to say to the folks at home? No. You just want to get down to business? Yeah. All right. She's ready to go. You guys ready to do this thing? Yeah! Come on, let's do it, Tina. Come back this way. Get yourself a marker. Let's get 45 seconds up on the clock. Everybody here to cheer on. Here we go. On your mark. Get set. Go. Coming to Miami, Florida. Florida. Do it, buddy. Come on. Yeah. Northwest Territories. Yellowknife. Yeah. Honduras. Honduras. Tegucigalpa. Honduras. Do it, buddy. Yeah. Manitoba. Churchill, Manitoba. Manitoba. Do it. Try it again. Try it again. Yeah. Alberta. Alberta. Edmonton, Alberta. Yeah. Yeah. Jamaica, Kingston. Kingston, Jamaica. Jamaica, do it, buddy, do it. Cheer on, guys, come on. Yeah. New Brunswick, New Brunswick, pour it on, buddy. New Brunswick, New Brunswick. Try it again, try it again. New Brunswick, come on back. Lake Michigan, Lake Michigan, Lake Michigan, go, buddy, go. Oh, keep going. Yeah. Seven and 45 seconds. Big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Come here, buddy. Oh, hey, check it out. Check it out, you're knocking over markers and everything. You almost made it. Come up here, come here. You did a great job today. You almost made it. Seven in 45 seconds. Excellent job. Great stuff for you. Chief, what do you have? Tough break. I just hate it when Carmen escapes. But no one could have done more than you did to catch her. And here's the perfect gift for the gumshoe on the go. This Acme Pocket Color Television. Now, when crime busting takes you into the field, you can still tune in your favorite shows. You made it. You're a sleuth. Congratulations! All right, buddy, put it right there, bud. You feeling all right? Yeah. You did a great job. You've been doing some great stuff for us today. There's one more thing I want you to do. You know what it is? Well, she sneaks around the world from Vienna to Carolina. She's sticking finger filter from Berlin down to Belize. She'll take you for a ride on a slow bus to China. Tell me where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Steal their soul in South Korea. Make it good and cut right on the from the Red Sea to Greenland. They'll be singing the blues. Well, they never Arkansas her steal.
And remember, our minds are strong, our spirits pure. When crime's the sickness, we're the cure. All geographic information was accurate as of the date this program was recorded. This program was presented by WQED Pittsburgh and WGBH Boston. And as always, gumshoes, Carmen's gang is bankrolled by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and viewers like you. And by Delta Airlines, because geography is important for kids everywhere. Delta Airlines. You'll love the way we fly. Catch Carmen San Diego computer software. Available at stores nationwide. This is PBS, the public broadcasting service. I, you know, I, I just don't have time to talk about that PBS series about time right now. A specter haunts the United States. A time famine. Work time is up, while leisure time is down. Not only are we working longer hours, we're working faster and faster and faster. But there are ways to get out of the rat race. You really should take the time to watch this. Oops, we're out of time. Funding for this program is provided by the...